How can you possibly trust God in the times you're drowning in hardship, suffering, and heartache? Joseph in the Bible was sold into slavery by his brothers. He remained a slave in Egypt for 11 years. Then his life went from bad to worse. He was falsely convicted of rape and put in prison. How could anyone trust God through all that? Joseph did, and his life reveals four keys to trusting God despite the circumstances of your life. When Joseph was 17, and obviously his father's favorite son, his eight older stepbrothers hated him for it. And Joseph made things worse. He told his father some bad things his brothers had done while shepherding the flocks. He was a tattletale. Joseph proudly wore the robe of many colors that his father had presented to him. It was a daily reminder to his brothers that their father loved them less than he loved Joseph. Finally, young, impetuous Joseph told his father and brothers that he had dreams where they would bow down to him. Joseph was a bit of a brat. While out with the flocks one day, his brothers grabbed him, going to kill him, but eventually they sold him to a passing caravan that was going into Egypt. They told their father that a wild animal had killed him. Joseph served his master Potiphar well. He became head of Potiphar's household. But Potiphar's wife kept trying to seduce him. He refused to sleep with her. Outraged, she accused him of raping her. He was thrown into prison. In Genesis 39, 20-21, it says, But while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. Joseph became the head of all the prisoners. So God was with Joseph throughout this time, and he was looking after him, but why didn't God set him free? Why let Joseph remain a slave for 11 years and in prison for two? Why? Why, God? Why? We ask that question a lot when bad things happen to us. In prison, Joseph interpreted a dream uh, for Pharaoh's cupbearer, who was later released from prison to serve Pharaoh again. Pharaoh had a dream about a coming famine, but no one could interpret it. The interpreter remembered Joseph. Joseph told Pharaoh a great famine was coming. He also gave Pharaoh a plan to prepare for the famine. Pharaoh was so impressed, he made Joseph number two in authority in all of Egypt. God knew that a famine was coming and that Israel and his family would need help to survive. Joseph was God's provision for the Israelites. Joseph would save his people, but Joseph, the spoiled favorite son of an overindulgent father, wasn't much use to God. He had to develop godly character and integrity. The 11 years as a slave and two years in prison for a crime he didn't commit were God's preparation for the work that God needed him to do as Pharaoh's right-hand man over Egypt. Psalm 105, 19 says, Until the time came to fulfill his dreams, the Lord tested Joseph Carrick. Proud, spoiled, 17-year-old Joseph learned humility. God purged his heart of hatred and bitterness against his brothers and Potiphar's wife. He learned to forgive. He learned to be totally dependent on God. He became a man who could be trusted. Greatest of all, he learned to trust God even though what was happening to him in life made no sense. God didn't waste Joseph's suffering. He used it for his good and for the good of God's chosen people. Joseph's dreams did come true. 23 years after his brothers sold him into slavery, his entire family bowed before Joseph. Joseph forgave his brothers and joyously welcomed his family who were reunited with him in Egypt. There are four keys here. Key number one to trusting God. God causes all things to work for your good. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. It's impossible to imagine how the bitter hatred of Joseph's eight older stepbrothers who sold him as a slave could ever be a good thing. And how could Potiphar's wife, lusting after young Joseph and accusing him of rape, become a good thing? In prison for two years, a criminal, how could God ever use that for good? But he did. Chuck Colson, who was special counsel to President Nixon, was convicted of Watergate-related crimes and sent to prison. 
He went from having an office next to the most powerful man in the world to a prison cell. How could that ever be a good thing? Well, Colson gave his life to Jesus before he went to prison. When he got out, Colson wrote books that changed the lives of thousands of people. I'm one of them. Born Again is one of the most amazing books I've ever read. I'll put a link to it in the description. And he founded Prison Fellowship International, which has transformed the lives of millions of prisoners and their families around the world. Who but God could turn Colson's disgrace and shame into something so glorious? God promised it, and he will do it. He will work all things for your good because you love him and are called according to his purposes. And God does have a purpose for your life. God has plans for you, detailed, specific plans. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared. He prepared them beforehand so that we would walk in them. Key two to trusting God. God is greater than anything you face. Genesis 29, 20 to 22 tells us the Lord was with Joseph in prison. He was kind to him and he gave him favor. Even more so, the Holy Spirit is always with us. He lives in us and he's there to help us and be with us forever. In John 14, 16 to 17, Jesus said, and I'll ask the Father and he'll give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of truth. He lives with you and will be in you. 1 John 4.4, 4, you are from God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. We need to get this. This is rock-solid truth. God, the Holy Spirit, who is in every single born-again Christian, is infinitely more powerful than Satan and all the devils combined. Key number three to trusting God. God's plan is greater than your understanding. First, God does have a plan, a great and wonderful plan to redeem mankind. We live in the final days of that plan. God's primary goal is to save us and transform us to be like Jesus. There will be things we don't know or can't understand about God's plan and specifically what is happening to us. What is happening in our lives may not make sense. For 13 years, Joseph's life didn't make sense. Then suddenly, it did. Joseph's life was lived to save the lives of everyone in his family, which would soon become the Israelites, a great people, the chosen nation of God. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. In the prison, at the lowest point of his life, God was working in Joseph. It may have felt like God had forgotten him, but God was completing his plans for Joseph's life. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. God's plans for you are good. God is the Redeemer who turns bad things into good things in our lives. Key number four to trusting God. God's love for you is real. It's tangible. At times, Joseph may have thought that God forgot about him or didn't care about him. But we saw that God was with him in the prison. Don't forget, it was God who enabled Joseph to interpret the dream of the cupbearer. It was God who set that cupbearer free. It was God who gave Pharaoh a dream that he couldn't interpret. And it was God who gave Joseph the meaning of of Pharaoh's dream, and a plan to prepare for the famine. God caused Joseph to go from a prison as a criminal to be elevated to greatness overnight. But in reality, Joseph's elevation came over 13 long, dark years. Joseph had to grow into the plan that God had for his life. He had to develop the character to carry the anointing of God to do the works that God was going to call him to do. When Joseph was ready, God made it happen. What God did for Joseph, he will do for you. He will use your greatest struggles to grow your character, then lift you out of those struggles when you're ready to do the things God has planned for your life. Isaiah 59, 14 is a precious promise. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. 
God is saying to you right now, I love you. I will never forget you. No matter what happens in your life, don't forget this. I will never forget you. There are several more keys to trusting God found in this amazing story. Read the story in Genesis and let Holy Spirit strengthen and encourage you. Activation. Joseph had God's promise to him, the dreams of a bright future where even his brothers would bow down to him. God's promises can anchor us in the storms of our lives. If you are facing adversity right now, write down the promises God has given you, any of the four keys above that you find useful, and find promises in Scripture that speak to your heart. Renew your mind with them frequently when doubts or negative thoughts pop into your mind. And continue to surrender your life to God. Let him strengthen, comfort, and break you free from your adversity. If you enjoyed this video, please watch Overcoming Adversity to Make God's Dream for You Come True. I believe this video will help you greatly. And there's a second video that helps you with identity, which will also help you if you're going through a tough time. And that video is who does God say you are? Both of these videos are here in the end screen of this video. Thank you for listening. and Thank you for doing the activation to let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Romans 12.2, New Living Translation. Until next time, God bless.